Saturn getting the Johnny Storm treatment by Imu Sama was not on my bingo card for this arc. I don't think so. I've seen a more gruesome death in One Piece, having your skin peeled off and only your bones and blood remain in the end. Saturn getting fired. Garling receiving a promotion. The satellites are alive, and Dragon finally saying something more than dots. Chapter eleven hundred and twenty-five. What constitutes death was diabolical, and we are not continuing from the last chapter where some dude was waiting for the straw hats. Instead, we go back to Egghead to clean up some stuff. The chapter starts on Egghead, and these guys are taking the Seraphim and Mark III pacifistas with them. Rob, Luchi, and Kaku return to the Marine ship, and they tell you to subscribe to my channel. Thanks, homie. Luchi declares that Stussy got killed in action. I don't know what happened here, but Luchi covering up for Stussy. I was not expecting that. Look at Kaku; they both know where Stussy is, but still refuse to reveal anything about her. And instead of putting a bounty on her head, they let her free. Well, that was some good character development. Moving on, we are shown. All Vice Admirals standing in front of Saturn and expressing their guilt on how they failed their mission. Saturn points out that they got the Mother Flame and York. With that, the results are more than adequate. But we did fumble a little bit. Vega Punk's message might cost me my job, and that Iron Giant, which definitely wasn't used as a cliffhanger for 800 chapters, was not on my to-do list for today. A vice admiral interrupts by saying we should chase them to Elbaf and Cha- and Saturn's like Elbaf. It's flashback time. Before I go on, I have to point this out that being on Egghead, we have received more character flashbacks than any other island. We got the Vegapunk fl- flashback, Kuma flashback, Revolutionary Army flashback, the Joy Boy flashback, Kizaru and Sentamaru's flashback, and if you include it, the Sabo flashback. This being an island of future, all it has given us is the past, in huge amounts. Oda is a genius, not gonna lie. Moving on to roughly 200 years ago, Saturn saved this robot from getting thrown into the trash can because he wanted to examine it, and Bro did a mistake by not disposing it at that time. Back to present, Admiral Doberman stands up and asks Saturn, "Actually, being the guy who works for the government." I must ask if the message was true or not. Oh dear. Well, it's you guys who are watching this video or me. Let's decide who's going to tell bro that he was not supposed to ask that question. Too late. Bro got oofed frame 1. Saturn did not hesitate even if it was a vice admiral. He used his random magical powers to blow his head away. back to york and she discovers that the cloud loft is shooting out clouds for no reason and that's when we are revealed that edison is alive and is the one who's doing it as he jukes york and makes punk records fly above the sky so that means they only have york saturn even lost the mother flame fumble of the century i swear to god bro we move on to the holy land of goobers and some people are not getting their snacks and food for one time and this man even killed his chef because of lack of food this page was just an anger bait for the audience like oda is making sure that the celestial dragon hate is consistent every week then we move on to the authority room and if not giving a f- was a person it would be saint figure langar bro pulls up to the gorase says he is the new member introduces his jobs and claims york refuses to elaborate and sits on saturn's chair as if it was his own garling getting promoted and becoming the new elder was not something i was i ever expected and i don't know why jupiter was given more emphasis in this entire panel because only he had an emotional reaction of disgust and disapproval when garling entered i mean the other people other guys also had disapproval on their face but why jupiter out of all of them i mean there already exists enough theories on reddit and youtube that jupiter is the only gorose who's going to betray the gorose members for the straw hats in the future and i don't know this just this is just like adding fuel to the fire 
Garling says he is the new warrior god of science and he has been bestowed new orders by some dude and York will be working under him from now on. And I'm excited to see what demonic powers he'll be receiving in the future because no way Emu made him an elder without buffing this man up. Back to Egghead and Saturn is having the time of his life but in a bad way as he gets his soul sucked or I don't know powers taken as he grows old and his skin peels off leaving only bones and blood this was the most gruesome death i've seen in one piece and i swear to god we don't have to see what happened in this panel back to the floating punk records and we are revealed that every satellite is alive and they are going to throw away york's spare part as we are shown an entire closet full of spare parts for satellites so their death was just a prank I wonder if Stella can do that as well but I I don't think so that's going to happen. Addison connects to Weatheria and talks to that guy who trained Nami who is shocked hearing that Vega Punk is alive. Cut to Kamabaka Queendom and we see the revolutionary army discussing about the future and Sabo figures out the celestials are living on top of the red line because the world is going to get flooded. Dragon says because of Vega Punk's message people will act out of self-interest than peace and they must do something before everyone oofs everyone to secure some space for themselves. Finally bro did say something and because of that I'm changing my outro screen for this video. I have no clue what Dragon is about to do but I'm super excited for the further development of the revolutionary army. That was the chapter. Do let me know what do you think about this chapter in the comments and I'll see you in the next one.